This is Clip Studio Paint, the drawing software I've been using ever since I started taking digital art seriously. For this video, we're going to be painting an original character and show you guys my process in designing it. I'll also walk you through how I use Clip Studio Paint, sharing some valuable tips and tools that you may or may not know. Shout out to Clip Studio Paint for sponsoring today's video, it's an absolute pleasure working with them. So let's get started. Okay, let's take a quick look at Clip Pseudo Paint. So after opening the app, you might get really confused because of how overwhelming it looks, but it's really simple. First, let's get a canvas. On the upper left side, we have the file button or just press Ctrl N for a shortcut. So here we have types of projects specifically for illustrations, comics, and animations. But for this video, we're gonna focus on illustration. We're gonna name this character one. Then for the width and height, we're gonna go with 3,800 by 4,600 pixels with 300 resolution or DPI. You can play around with those numbers, but I usually use anything above 2,000 pixels. And the orientation would be in portrait because I'm planning on posting this on my socials like Instagram and Twitter. Okay, there are tons of buttons here, so I'm just gonna showcase some of the most useful ones. On the left side, we have our tools. The most important thing we need is a pen or brush or whatever you call it. And we can find those things over here. This is the pen section. And let me introduce you to the legendary G pen, which is the pen that I mostly use. Actually, this is the only pen I use. Now, I didn't tweak any of the settings from this pen, but there's still a detailed brush settings if you want to do some changes. But the G pen, in my opinion, is perfect as it is. We also have a pencil section if you prefer a pencil texture in your sketches. Next is the brush section, which has a variety of realistic brush textures that you can experiment with. But the most useful brush here is the opaque watercolor brush, which I always use to smudge in my paintings. There's also the airbrush, decorations, of course the eraser, and then some other essential tools. The lasso tool is used to select certain areas to be isolated, meaning you can only draw inside those areas. And there's a number of really cool techniques that you can do with that. It comes in other shapes as well, like rectangle, eclipse, and a bunch more. There's a lot of tools that comes with this, but it can also be combined with our next tool, the transform tool. To use this, press Ctrl plus T while selecting the area you want to change. With that, we can scale, move it around, and even distort and change perspective. If you want to try Eclipse Studio for yourself, you can head on to this link where you can get a few months of free trial for all devices. Clip Studio is available on tablet and PC with all the same features. You can also click the link in the description where it guides you on how you can draw using Clip Studio right now. One of my greatest problems when drawing is not knowing how to start on a blank canvas because most of the time we expect it to be good and that pressure leaves us frozen in place. So to counter this, we need to have some sort of basis when we're drawing, something to work on. Luckily, we have this interesting feature from Clip Studio Paint, which will also accelerate your drawing process by a lot. I'm talking about 3D assets. First, click these two arrows on the right. And here, you'll see some of the Clip Studio models. Click body type, and here you can either choose a male or female model. Once you've chosen your model, simply drag that into the canvas. Now, I prefer my model to be plain and simple, so we'll have to remove the shadows. And to do that, we just press display object list, and then head on to light source, and then uncheck the apply light source. And there's also this in-depth character model customization that lets you edit the shape and size of the character. Hey, um, this is future me just letting you know that as of now, there's an updated version of Clip Studio Paint where you can now choose body types that leans towards more into anime style figures. You can learn more about that along with some other updates by using this link right here. I'll also put that in the description. Now back to the past. Go. There's also a problem with 3D models. They're kind of difficult to pose and work with. Sometimes it's easy if the pose you want is simple. But if you're thinking about a really complicated pose, you're gonna have a rough time figuring it out. But I guess once you spend a decent amount of time working on it, you'll probably get the hang of it. Okay, let's say you're done with the posing and you want to change the color of the model. Simply add a layer above the model and then merge it. You don't have to merge it, but I'm used to that method. Then we're gonna head on to this effect window right here. 
we're going to use the layer color and change it to orange or whatever color you prefer and then lower the opacity of that layer. We're going to use this 3D model as we sketch an idea for the character. While we're doing that, let's talk about is using 3D models cheating? Well, personally, I don't think it is. I mean, it is a tool that makes our lives a little easier. And it doesn't really do all the work magically like AI does. So you still need the raw skill and knowledge to be able to utilize 3D models effectively. With that said, the key is how you use them. If you're using 3D models as a guide, a base, or a reference, it's completely valid. However, directly tracing or heavily relying on them without adding your own artistic touch might limit your creativity and skill growth. So you can't have a one-to-one -one copy of a 3D model, because what would be the point then? Clip Studio also has online assets. It's kind of like a shop where you can find stuff like background models, objects, as well as brushes and other stuff. These are made by other artists, some of them are free, but some of them cost a couple of doubloons. Once you see something you like, you can just download them and you can just find them in your downloads back in your material tab. Now I'm going to show you a pretty cool trick that you can do with 3D models. If you're feeling lazy or just don't know how to draw something, you can simply search for a 3D model of that something. Now this isn't the trick yet. In my case, I wanted the sort, so I just looked that up in the clip soda assets. I didn't want to spend anything, so I just filtered to show only everything that is free. Luckily, I found something that was close to my idea. So shout out to this guy. Download that real quick and go back to Clip Studio Paint. Simply drag that into the canvas. Adjust it a bit. Now, the cool trick starts here. First, add a blank layer over that 3D model and merge it below. Press this effect right here and it will change its color. Now go back to the effects window and press extract line. It will now make a line art of the model for you. Pretty cool, right? And of course, I'll just adjust it a bit so it wouldn't seem like I just ripped it off. Anyway, you can do that for anything, not just 3D models. You could also do it on an image and even your drawings. So how does the extract line effect actually work? Well, to put it simply, it converts your images into line arts, as the name suggests. Let's take a look at this painting of a cube. Now, once you apply the extract line, it would make your subject black and white and would create black lines for the transition parts or the edges of the painting. If you want colored lines, you can simply apply the layer color effect. Unfortunately, the effect settings isn't available in the pro version. It is only available when you're using Clip Studio Paint X. So just in case you're planning on using it. Now let's move on to designing the actual character. I actually used a 3D model to design a character because I was really rushing and I needed the base to work on for the design. After getting a base model, I just drew some basic enemy designs here because I'm still testing the waters, I don't really design much OCs, so I wanted to start with something basic. And actually, I did use one of my sketches from years ago because I can't think of any decent design. I just design it whatever comes to mind and I wanted to keep it simple because I think simple is much more iconic and it tends to get more easily remembered, you know, without the complicated details or something. So I just decided to go with a plain shirt and a skirt to make it more kind of generic. My initial idea was a cool female character and my key design was a girl with a coat and then a big sword. And that coat would sometimes serve as a cape, a really cool cape. I thought the contrast of having a plain character and then a really big sword was really interesting. So I just proceeded with that. And I was using a bunch of references for this, but I still ended up with something really basic. Even the colors, I decided to do black and white just to be safe. I mean, who doesn't like that combination? Now we're done with that simple character sheet, let's move on to something more interesting. Let's now sketch a full illustration for this character. Okay, now let me tell you the importance of grayscale. Well, it's particularly good for learning how to paint. See, painting is not all about colors. Shadows and contrast is really important in making your art realistic. So it is better to know values first. 
Okay, so here's the sketch I made. It's a little bit unpolished, but it's good enough to render since we will be doing most of the work in grayscale. So first thing we'll do is create a base layer behind the sketch. There are two ways you can do this. The first is manually painting. The other one is a shortcut by selecting the wand tool and clicking on anywhere outside the drawing. That means the outside of your sketch needs to have solid lines without any gaps so that we can freely select the parts that we want. Then we're going to press the inverse tool right here and that would select the opposite which is the inside. After that, we're going to select the bucket tool. Here, we're going to fill everything inside. Now, once you have that gray base layer, it's going to be imperfect, especially if you're like me that has a really rough sketch and you can just clean those up. Make sure to erase everything that goes over the line. This will separate our character from the background. After that, it is important to have a streamlined process. So the first step is setting up the values. Add another layer. This is going to be the multiply layer. Make sure to clip it to the gray base layer like this so it doesn't go over the sketch. Now we're going to block in the main shadows or basically everything that isn't in light. So now pick a shade for your shadow and make sure that it's not too dark or too light. Also, don't just use a single value of shadow. Try to use darker or lighter ones. Also, don't just stick to a single shape. Try to add a variety of strokes, maybe textures. You gotta emulate how the shadows work on certain materials. And it takes a lot of experience to be able to figure that out. So good luck. Next, we'll add the local value of the clothing, like on the coat, the skirt, the shirt, the skin, and the hair. Now, this is the part where it gets really complicated. So I'm gonna share a principle that I follow when I'm working on grayscale. Now, what I need you to understand is it takes a lot of effort and studying from actual reference to get the hang of this. But there's a simple technique that I always apply and would help you organize your shadows. And the concept is hard and soft edges. Now, I did talk about this already, but if you haven't heard about it, it's basically having a control over your edges. Soft looks like this. And soft edges are usually achieved by using, you guessed it, a soft brush. Usually an airbrush or you can just use the smudge tool or in my case, I use a watercolor brush. And then there's the hard edges. I usually use a pen for this where it's pretty much a solid line. Now this is more of a preference but I usually don't like it when there's too much solid lines because I prefer a realistic or having this semi-realism in my paintings. So a solid bald shape is kind of a big no-no. I mean, it depends on the composition, but usually solid colors tend to make my drawings look flat. So I mostly try to have some sort of variation by smudging other values inside it. And for my process, I mostly lay down some solid shapes to block in my shadows. After that, I usually just smudge the edges to balance it. It's all about having this harmony between soft and hard edges. Having control over those two can make your paintings look a hundred times more interesting, along with, of course, hitting the right notes or proper knowledge of light and shadow. Now that we have our proper values, we can now move on to coloring. Okay, there are different ways that you can color grayscale, but the easiest method is probably using gradient maps. So first, click the edit menu, go to tonal correction, and then gradient map. Now if you don't know what a gradient map is, this would probably give you an idea. These are pre-made mappings that came with Clip Studio Paint. It's really helpful to have this because it gives you a quick idea on what you could do with these mappings. There's a bunch of interesting combinations that you can play around with, like this one, which I really like using. But you can also make one yourself. But how does it work? Let's think of it this way. Here we have three tonal values. What gradient maps will do is basically swap themselves in according to their shade. See these points right here? You can add more if you like, but you can basically choose a color for your values or the lightness or darkness of your painting. It's a little more complicated than that, but you get the idea. Q 
keep in mind that it affects the whole layer. So a good way to accelerate your process is have a dedicated layer for every part of your drawing. So let's say the skin for example. If you have it separated, you can easily manipulate its gradient mapping without worrying about the other parts. After that, I did a bunch of adjustments and editing, which is a whole nother process on its own. So I'll just save it for another video. For now, I hope this video helps you in your progress. God bless and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.